Good morning students. Today's topic is measurement of metabolic rate. Measurement of metabolic rates can be of different different types. One by a calorie metri calorimetry and uh, other by the oxygen consumption method or the carbon dioxide liberated methods and so on. We have other few uh, topics. Today we will be completing that. Calorimetry. One technique we can use to measure the amount of heat evolved in a chemical or a physical process is known as calorimetry. It is used to measure the amounts of heat transferred to or from a substance. To do so, the heat is exchanged with a calor, you know, calibrated object, either it is a calorimeter, calorimeter. The change in temperature of uh, the measuring part of the calorimeter is converted into the amount of heat. See, this is the calorimeter wherein you can see the thermometer is placed here and uh, you know this is the uh, substance inside the solution so that the heat cannot be uh, you know traveled outside or inside. It is completely insulated. And whatever the reactions is happening, whether it is an exothermic and endothermic reactions, the reactions are happening and the temperature is noted down with the help of the thermometer. This is the advanced type which is there, which is seen here. And this is the normal one. And this is the advanced which is used in the uh, industrial uh, purposes and the research purposes. Uh, this gives you the accurate um, readings of the calorimeter. Of the substances see this is the um, substances before this I would like to tell you uh, the knowledge of heat capacity of the surroundings and careful measurement of the masses of the system and surroundings uh, and the temperatures uh, before and after the process allows one to calculate the heat transferred this is the uh, exothermic reaction which is happening see here you can see this is a reactions which is happening which is liberating the heat to the solution outside uh, solution or the environment see here the uh, heat is already released into the environment wherein the thermometer reading is showing rised up or increased in the temperature this is the endothermic reaction which is showing uh, see all the uh, heat which is there in the surrounding environment which is entering the uh, reaction meaning the uh, so the reaction is absorbing the uh, heat which is there in the surrounding medium so thereby the temperature is showing the lesser uh, temp uh, degrees or the temperature is decreasing see here is uh, one of the uh, sum which i will teach you a little later coming back to this the measurement of the heat transform using the approach uh, required uh, requires the definition of the system and its surroundings uh, see a calorimeter is a device used to measure the amount of heat evolved in a chemical or a physical process as i told you very earlier the temperature change along with a specific heat and the mass of the solution can be used to the to calculate the amount of heat uh, evolved in a system so here is a sum which you can which makes you very much clear what i'm talking about see uh, here is the sum a uh, 59.7 gram piece of a metal uh, metal that had been that had been uh, submerged in a boiling water and quickly transferred into the 60 ml of the water uh, initially at the 22 degrees celsius the final temperature is uh, is about 28 degree 28.5 degrees celsius of the uh, metal uh, sorry uh, use the use these data to determine the specific heat of the uh, metal and uh, identify what metal it is see here is the sum which has been solved for you all uh, see a uh, q is nothing but the heat of the metal and the uh, q of the water so when you uh, see this see noticing that uh, since the metal was submerged in a boiling water and its initial temperature was 100 degrees celsius since it was a boiling water and then that of the and uh, that for water is 60 ml of the water uh, which was submerged in either it is again in grams if you can tell you then again it's a 60 gram uh, so we have this data uh, see when it is substituted in the formula so you can see the solving of it uh, which gives you the result of 0 0.38 joules per gram 
okay this is uh, something equivalent or uh, the specific heat is closest to that of the value of the copper copper value is 0 0.39 joules per gram so we can identify what metal is that that is nothing but the copper in this particular sum okay so this makes you the gives you a clear idea about what i'm talking exactly about the calorimeter how to uh, you know uh, know about the heat transfer in the medium so moving back to the uh, next one is the oxygen consumption method and the amount of carbon dioxide liberated the uh, measurements of the oxygen consumption and the carbon dioxide production can be used to calculate the energy expenditure okay so how much of energy that we are spending uh, that can be measured using uh, using or uh, in terms of how much of oxygen that you consume and how much of the carbon dioxide you are releasing it outside so such a data is useful to uh, useful in the uh, you know nutritional management of the variety of pathological conditions also so if there is any infections again the cell is in the tension isn't it so with lots of pressure it is uh, we are going to inhale lots of oxygen and the carbon dioxide is let out the variations in the uh, concentrations will be changed henceforth we can determine what exactly the uh, condition or the health condition of the particular person the value can be obtained by using the canopy spirometer computer system i'll show you how that uh, looks like see here is a person with a uh, tight mask and here is the canopy of the spirometer which is connected to the system which shows how much of amount of oxygen that you are consuming and how much of amount of carbon dioxide you are letting it out depending on that um, concentration they are going to know the person's health there see here a small children's also can be uh, can undergo this particular uh, um, you know system or the process uh, see here is a person who is in active state okay wherein he is doing the exercise and thereby they are going to take out the readings of how much amount of carbon dioxide he is letting it out and how much of amount of oxygen he is taking inside the body so depending on the activities of the body also you can know that how much of um, oxygen consumption is happening by the body and how much of ox uh, carbon dioxide is letting out uh, in turn you can calculate the energy required by the person okay so thereby that is what is the complete idea behind it so generally two approaches have been used to assess the energy uh, expenditure that is one is the direct method another one is the indirect method there are two types so indirect method is a little um, not so up appropriate and apt uh, by that also can be done of course but uh, it is um, the activity of the questionnaires you can ask the questions for the person and they can let know what is the stage of the health condition or it can be a rate uh, heart rate um, also can be uh, recorded so that to know how is the health condition of the person or it can be a pedometer or it can be you can use the axillometer also so but direct measurement of the oxygen uptake as the basis of for measuring the energy expenditure it has a wide um, a great uh, value and it is well established also as you have seen in the different pictures it is well established and uh, you know lots of advanced <laughs> techniques have come to this particular uh, technique that is the uh, uh, direct measurement of the oxygen uptake uh, of the uh, see variety of the human activities this technique is used uh, widely and uh, requires uh, you know requires uh, lots of uh, uh, timed connections meaning a particular time is needed for it so uh, time need to be there so that uh, you can uh, to that particular time limit you are going to take out the values of oxygen consumption and the oxygen carbon dioxide released of uh, expired gases and uh, subsequent analysis of the uh, expired um, oxygen and the carbon dioxide uh, consum uh, concentrations can also be uh, you know calculated lab with the help of the laboratory techniques this is the picture which shows which is a self explanatory i have given here this is because uh, see here the two outlets are closed okay this is the one outlet which is connecting both the systems here so the one which has the uh, seeds uh, organisms which are respiring and the other one is the glass beads nothing but the non um, 
uh, non-living substances. Here is a living substance and here is the soda lime which is going to absorb the carbon dioxide which has been released by the particular living systems. So the, here is the clips uh, which has been closed to both of the A and B system. And here you can also see the uh, loop which is going to give us the measurement of uh, you know uh, the pressure as the pressure is uh, decreasing. Uh, the volume of uh, volume is reduced by uh, giving the uptake of the uh, by the uptake of the oxygen the pressure is decreasing there going to the calculations of the energy differences in the food consumption and the excreta this is also one of the method that you can uh, see the uh, how the metabolic uh, rate uh, measurements can be done the determination of the energy values, especially the heat of the combustion uh, of varieties of food and excreta, form uh, in uh, important uh, part of many um, investigations in um, nutrition. See here, the calorie meter or the bomb oxygen calorie meter is used commonly used to determine this. Food that is ingested uh, contains energy and reflected in the form of a heat that is measured after complete combustion of the carbon dioxide and water in a bomb calorie meter this energy is referred to as the ingested energy or the gross energy the incomplete digestion of the food in the small intestine sometimes undergoes the fermentation and uh, you know it is going to be uh, absorbed uh, carbon unabsorbed carbon uh, carbohydrate in the uh, in the colon resulting in the uh, in the uh, loss of the energy as um, as a fecal energy there and also the co and also this is called this energy is called as the gaseous energy which is uh, uh, which is which is uh, which is in the form of a fecal matter there okay uh, so a small amount of energy is lost through the body surface also so here is a picture which shows you the oxygen bomb calorie meter wherein see the electrical connections are given this is an artificially made system to to know the how uh, exactly the energy is being uh, released from the food that we take in and also the fecal matter high pressure oxygen combustion bomb is there here so water bath and the stirrer is present so the thermometer is also been present here this is this is how that oxygen bomb calorie meter looks like and say for example you have your uh, chocolates what is the chocolates uh, showing you is when you consume a chocolate so it is in the form of a carbohydrate energy isn't it so the factors ranging from 5.56 kilojoules per gram to 17 uh, kilojoules per gram. Most of the individuals foods that are major source of energy in a diet. Okay. So resulting in a uh, general form, uh, you know, if you can consider it generally, minus six, that means so much of uh, percentage of energy is being lost plus three meaning plus so much percentage of energy is gained okay assuming a diet in which the carbohydrate provides 50 percent of the energy okay but the effect of the total activity total dietary energy would be between minus three and plus one uh, one point five percent so so much variations that you can see isn't it 50 percent is being uh, lost somewhere Whatever we are assuming, uh, the so much 50% is only being shown here as a value. The range is narrow. When mixed diets rather than the specific foods are being, uh, you know, assure, assessed. When you calculate so only the specific foods, then this will be the range. Okay. So here ends up your topic. Uh, thank you. If you have understood and if you have liked the video, then like it. Okay. We'll be meeting soon with the other topics. Thank you.